I met Sam Guckenheimer when he introduced himself to me at an Agile conference in 2013, and it was one of the most astounding and memorable introductions ever. He basically said in 45 seconds, I read the Phoenix Project, I really liked it, and I think I know exactly how you put it together. Am I right? <laughs> and he was so right, it was actually a little uncomfortable. And ever since then, he's been one of the biggest influences on me about how I think about DevOps. And when he told me how he's been studying how engineering workforces have been impacted by COVID-19 and the incredible data sets that he's been able to analyze, I knew this was a talk that this community needs to see. In fact, we changed the entire schedule to create time to accommodate these type of mini lectures just to make this talk happen. I'm so excited that Sam can share this data with you because it is relevant to every technology leader. Welcome, Sam. Thank you, Gene. I wanted to also say thank you for this conference and the years you've been running it. It's one of the things I really look forward to every year. This year is our first year remote. And I wanted to look at this crazy time we're living in through the lens of the Chinese word for crisis, which is written as danger and opportunity. And I've used traditional Chinese as a shout out to Taiwan, a country of 25 million, Tsai Ing-wen, their president has done a remarkable job holding her death count from COVID down to seven. We should all be watching that. Now, in this crisis, what are the dangers that we are facing? Well, you know what quarantine feels like now. Back in February, Lancet put together a review study of 400 medical papers around the effects of quarantine. And what they found was fairly consistent, long-lasting PTSD, confusion, anger, why me? All of this, this feeling of disruption that didn't go away. And on top of that, we are seeing from the pandemic a depression such as we haven't seen since the 1930s. We're arguing about how much global GDP will fall this year. The economists are having a field day. And meanwhile, most people are worrying about their jobs. The New York Times cited a recent study from MIT that 43% of the jobs that have been furloughed during the pandemic are not coming back. That has everyone stressed. And then we see on top of that a great movement for social reform and civic justice. And that movement has led to worldwide protests and counter protests and false flag operations and hooliganism that we've all been coping with. London's been a hotspot, for example, of the um, uh, disrest that may or may not have anything to do with the social issues, but the social issues are here to stay. History's had us here before. This is the fifth macro cycle of technological revolutions. Mick Kirsten at the last summit borrowed from the work of Carlotta Perez. She'll be here to talk with us tomorrow about the progress of technological revolutions. They go through these inflection points. They go from periods of invention that are fueled by financial capital to deployment that are fueled by production capital. And in the middle, there is a disruption consistently where we go from rising income inequality to rising income equality, where we see great social change and suitable regulation to allow us to enter the new era. I don't think anyone in this audience would dispute that we right now see a sewer in social media that needs suddenly to be treated more like broadcast 
regulation when it came on under the FCC in the 30s. I don't think anyone would dispute that we need to see many of the reforms similar to what we saw in the 1930s under the New Deal. So we're in this historic turning point. And not surprisingly, in the middle of this historic turning point, we have a leadership crisis. We've been talking about what's transformational leadership, what makes a great CEO, talking about all these things for a decade. And what we see is that that transformation, that digital transformation, it wasn't the great CEO. It was the health crisis. That's what's brought us here. Now let's talk about the opportunity that we have in the middle of this crisis. The first good news is that the internet and cloud have scaled. Microsoft Teams, for example, in three weeks of March saw its video meeting minutes increase 10,000 instant percent with hardly a blip. All of the services have been scaling like crazy. The cloud has been scaling like crazy. And it's basically worked. That is in itself astonishing. We've also seen the financial markets recognize that this change we're seeing with all of us remote is very friendly to the technological change we've seen toward DevOps. 